right, thank you for joining today's Aquarium at Home live stream. We are standing beside our Vancouver Island tank, and you are seeing one of the coolest things about this tank, which is the wave motion. Uh, now, right now, normally, uh, during the day, while we're closed, we actually have the waves off, but we thought that you should see, if you've never visited, this is a good a chance to see what this tank looks like when it's in full motion, and this is once we reopen what you can expect to see when you come back. And explaining why we have waves in this tank, I'm gonna turn things over to Tasha Asaki. Tasha is one of our, are you Aquarist too, or are you Senior, senior Aquarist? Yes. Senior Aquarist, all right, so we got a Senior Aquarist today. Uh, Tasha, talk a little bit about uh, what this tank is, what we show in it, and then uh, explain why we have uh, waves. Okay, so this is our Vancouver Island tank. So this is just a representation of what it would look like on the shores of Vancouver Island if you were to visit there. Uh, Vancouver Island is a large-ish island off the coast of British Columbia, which is in Canada, so just above Washington. Um, and so here we've got the rock work that you would see like maybe on the shore, and then lots of the animals that you would find in that area. So these are all um, mostly invertebrates in this tank, and they don't move a lot. So when you're living in an environment such as this with a wave, you can think of the ocean on the shore, it's very wave and rapid -y. Um You gotta be able to hold on tight or hunker down because you don't wanna be blown everywhere uh, on the shore. So a lot of these animals are tight to the rock. So they hold on and they don't move around because it would be pretty dangerous to do so. <laughs> All right, and this is a good time for us to introduce uh, a new feature that we have, or a new, a new collection of activities that we're starting to, to push out uh, this week. Actually, this is the first day we're doing it. This is our Weekday Wonders education packets. And every day when we do these live streams, which usually will happen at about 1 p.m., uh, do check our Facebook page, though, at around 11. Uh, usually you'll know whether we're gonna have one at 1 p.m. or if the time has changed, if you check in the morning, We'll try and let you know when it's going to be and what we're going to talk about. But as part of this, these live streams, we're going to start introducing a question a day. And what that question is designed to do is to talk or spark discussions. For those of you who are watching at home, many of you are probably parents of young children. This might be substituting for a science hour. And we want to give you an option, an opportunity to have a more in-depth discussion about maybe general science notions, science principles but in the context of what you're seeing on the live stream. And today's question uh, that Tosh is gonna help us answer is, where do animals live in the ocean? And that's a big question, it's kind of hard to answer, so answer it however you like, Tasha, but, but okay. where do animals live in the ocean? All right, so basically, they live everywhere in the ocean. So they live way deep down in the bottom of the ocean, you know, miles and miles deep, and they live very, on the surface of the ocean even. So everywhere in between you can find animals in every habitat in the ocean. And so basically you can split it into certain categories. There are animals who live on the bottom, uh, so things that live on sand or things that don't actively swim around, maybe like a crab, those are called benthic. And then you've got other animals that live in the water column. Speaking of, here's a crab. Fish. Oh yeah, there we go, our dungeons crab. And then you've got fish that uh, live in the water column, so they're up swimming around. And so each, basically as you go down, uh, you're changing your zone based on how much light is penetrating. So at the top, you've got lots of light, that's where you get your coral, things that depend on lots of light. As you go deeper, you lose some of that light. You still have some things that can live there, like coral, you know, some species can live with minimal light. And then you go deeper where there's no light at all. And then you get your specialized animals that have, make their own light basically to find prey or to attract a mate, things like that. So basically, the ocean is split into layers depending on how much light is there. And then each layer is split into uh, whether animals live on the bottom or in the water column. Great, all right, well that, that is your answer uh, for today's weekday wonders question. Uh, again, this is a new series of activities that we're rolling out to spark lively scientific discussions based on what you're seeing in the live streams. Uh, there will also be additional activities uh, that will be released on a weekly basis that are tied to a general topic uh, that you can view by going to the aquarium's website, which is tnaqua.org, and looking at our Aquarium at Home section. All of this content, including also links to our live cams, some coloring pages, activity sheets, 
things to help you kind of stave off boredom and spark some intelligent discussion and broaden your horizons a little bit, even if you have to stay inside. If you go to a, our Aquarium at Home subsection of tnaqua.org, that would be where you can find it. But uh, many of you are joining and watching right now, and we want to know what your questions are. But before you start asking those, or you can go ahead and, I guess you can go ahead and start asking them, but Tasha, what are we going to be doing today? Because we're not, we're at this tank, but what are we going to be doing? Yes, so we're going to do something very exciting that we usually only do once a week, which is today. We are going to be feeding our larger anemones that are in this tank. So you may look in here and like, oh, look at all the plants, but actually there are no living plants in here. They're all animals. So everything that has a color is an animal. So all those red and green, um, spiky kind of looking animals are actually animals. So they have a very slow metabolism because they live in very cold water. So they don't need to eat every day like you and I do. We have to eat, you know, generally three meals a day or else we'll get really hungry. They generally eat, you know, every once in a while. A fish will swim by, they'll catch it, they'll be happy for a little while. So we're gonna get in today and we're gonna feed these guys. And I have a little example of what we're gonna be feeding them. We've got, here we've got some clam. It's actually shipped to us as clam's tongue. Cause it looks like a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got our shrimp. Everybody knows that, they're pretty familiar with that. And our squid, everybody knows that usually. And then we've got two of our fish here. This is a smelt and this is a capelin. Um, our penguins eat a lot of these too. And then over here, this yellow stuff, it's kind of hard to see, but there's lots of little tiny balls. Those are capelin eggs. So we pulled those out of some of the capelin. And then these guys here that look like shrimp, they are called krill. And that is everything. So, and basically, oh. so we're going to have caviar then. Yes, we are having <laughs> caviar. A very, a very fancy lunch. Actually, you can, eat this, um, you can eat this in this, a restaurant. <laughs> Yeah, we, I, we should point out that all the food that we serve our, our animals, that we feed our animals, is actually restaurant quality. So it's shipped to us. It's the same food that you would eat at a restaurant. Yep. Uh, and then basically what we do is we take all those foods and we chop it up into different sizes depending on who we're trying to feed. So we've got some smaller cut here for our fish that we're going to feed. And then all the larger cut mixes for the anemones. You might be able to see it, but there's little particles on these larger pieces. Um, as I go through and feed, those will fall off, and then the, the urchins and the stars can go through and dig through the gravel to get those little pieces. Great. All right, let me uh, catch up on some of these shout-outs we're getting. Thank you all for joining us, first of all, and for shouting out and letting us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, I'm seeing some of those come in as well. We've got some people from, looks like Alabama. Wow, Washington State. Uh, we've got some people who work at the aquarium. Thank you for joining us, uh, those of you who are working from home. Uh, my mother is watching, apparently. Uh, oh, we do have a question. So Melody Cook would like to know on behalf of her 15-year-old son, do you have any sea pigs in this exhibit? We do not have any sea pigs in here. Nope. What is a sea pig? I'm not actually sure what a sea pig is. All right. Well, I, I know there are swimming <laughs> pigs down in the Bahamas. I'm not sure if that's what we're talking about. but uh... Yeah, this is really cold water. So all of these animals are generally found, found from Alaska down into maybe the upper Washington area. And then some are found down into Mexico. But... Generally, they're all really cold water animals, so they're specialized for those areas. Yeah, I mean, you have to figure that, again, this habitat is representing the waters off of the west coast of Canada, so it's pretty pretty cold water. Yeah, it's 53 degrees, so it'll be a little chilly for me. Yeah, say so hints to the waders that, uh, that Tasha is sporting at the moment. That water is not water you would want to get in without having some sort of protection. <laughs> Uh, Becky, I'm going to go ahead and preemptively apologize. I will not get last names correct, but uh, Becky Leish? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to, I guess I probably got that wrong, but what she would like to know, are your green gloves special for what you're doing or are they just green? These are, um, no, they're not specialized, but they are kind of special in that they're recyclable. So they use these to make gym floors and, you know, I don't know what else. I know gym floors for sure <laughs> though. Uh, so we just recycle our, all of our gloves because we use a lot of them. But they're basically, what's that called? Regular non-latex. I'm not even gloves. sure. I can't think of the name, but they're just regular gloves. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so David Miller says he's watching from uh, Mosheim, Tennessee with Emily, Melody, Austin, Noah, Josiah, and Liliana, and they all say hello. Hello. All right. Uh, so Carolyn Singer is asking on behalf of Emma, do anemones have mouths? That's an excellent segue for us to actually start feeding them. Yeah. So We'll look at one real fast, so then when I get in, you'll know what I'm doing. Um, so basically, all the anemones follow the same pattern. If you think of them like a non-mobile jellyfish, uh, they've got those tentacles around the sides, so they have stinging cells like a jellyfish. So they sting their prey, 
and then very in the center there you can see like a little misshaping kind of circle that's their actual mouth so they'll bring it from their tentacles into their mouth it's like a stomach like a pit they'll digest it and then they only have one opening so they poop out of the same hole they eat with is that so. called a blastopore I feel like that's something I remember from AP Biology. <laughs> all right, uh, so as Tasha gets ready to do that, I'll say hello to some of these people who are shouting out from, right. looks like hello from Florida. Uh, Scarlett uh, Giet, Giet, Giet. Anyway, I love the aquarium too. Thank you for, for telling us. Uh, we love all of our fans, no matter where they're watching from, whether that's Liz Parrott watching from Nash Vegas. Thank you for joining us. Looks like Woodville, Alabama is there from Michelle Duke. Thank you for giving us a shout out from down in Woodville. We got West Tennessee. All right, so Tasha, you are gonna be uh, feeding them, but how will you feed them? Are you just gonna be target feeding them, feeding each one specifically? Will you be broadcast? Uh, fancy tongs. We're going to pick up a piece of food and hand it to each an enemy and then they'll grab it. Before we do that, I can tell the fish are really hungry because they're popping up. So I'm gonna feed them the fish real fast. There's all the animals in here are invertebrates, which means they don't have any bones, uh, but there are actually four, five fish in here, five individual fish. Um, so we'll feed them real fast. Here they come over there and hungry. So that bigger one is a kelp green link. They generally live in the bottom. Uh, they'll pop up to eat and then hunker down. And then that other It's almost like we have them trained. They're eating just right in front of the camera. They're actually pretty smart. You can see you walk up to the exhibits and they know, they know what's about to happen. They also seem very curious to me. Whenever I walk in here, they always come up to the glass and it's like they follow me around. They're like, hey, you got some food? All right, so while we're, while Tasha's feeding, again, be sure comment section with questions because whatever questions you get out to, to us I will try and pass on to her. Do you have a sea turtle one? We do have sea turtles at the aquarium. They are actually in our secret reef exhibit which is kind of above and all around us. It's the largest exhibit, uh, our largest single tank in the entire aquarium but that, that is not where we are at the moment. So Tasha, while you're doing that, can you tell uh, us what anemones are in the tank? Because Angelica, 11-year-old Angelica, would like to know. Yeah, we got a variety in here. These green ones are green serpent anemones, and then these red ones over here, they, they have red bases, and then they either have red tentacles or white tentacles. Uh, they're all fish eating anemones. And then, let's see here. Um, over here, you can see those uh, pink colored bases with the white dots. So someone asked, uh, oh, Taylor Serber would like to know what exhibit did this tank replace? It looks like it's in the River Journey building. We're actually in the Ocean Journey building. This is right before, if you've ever been to the aquarium, this is right before you enter the undersea cavern and go under the, sea, under the secret reef, which we mentioned earlier. That's that large tank. It's 600,000 plus, gal 600, plus gallons. Um, but uh, this actually replaced our, our Jelly's Living Art uh, Gallery. That's right, I forget. Yes, okay, so hopefully that gives you some sort of context for, for what we're seeing and where we are. We'll see what happens with this, uh, with this piece of fish.
hopefully you can see, I'm not sure how good the video quality is on this, but we're, we're kind of working with what we have to work with. So I imagine, Tasha, that from doing this for so many years, you probably get to be pretty good at judging where those tongs are in the water despite the refraction kind of affecting what it looks like, where it looks like they are. And it helps that the, the waves, as you might have noticed, have stopped doing their wave motion. And that was sort of by intent. We wanted to make sure you got a chance to see. If you go back earlier in the stream, you can see what this tank looks like when the waves are actually going. Uh, but we did actually ask them to turn it off, so it's a little easier to hear. And that too. We want to make sure that Tasha is safe. Now, is it difficult to navigate this tank? The hardest part is that the animals move around, so your clear path um, is clear one week and then different the next, so. Well, hold on though. These look like they're just not moving at all. That's right. <laughs> Generally, they stay in the same spot, uh, but they can move around if they would like to. And our um, sea stars generally move around quite frequently. So how do anemones move then? So they got a foot there, which is just a really strong muscle. So they, some of them swim, actually. If you've ever seen a video of anemones swimming, it's, um, it's kind of funny. They just move their trunk back and forth. Um, but generally they can't swim, so they'll be, if they don't like where they are in the wild, they'll detach, and then the current will carry them somewhere new, and then they'll, wherever they land up, end up in. And that, that can be kind of problematic, I guess, when you're starting, you're, we were first starting this exhibit, it seemed like you were kind of having to place them and replace them. catch up on some of these comments that we're getting. We've got a lot of really great shout outs. It looks like people are really watching from kind of all over the place, which is wonderful. Uh, Kimberly Hurt, <laughs> who we also work with, would like to know, do the an anemones move? And it looks like we just answered that. So uh, Melissa Olson would like to know, have you been stung? Because you mentioned that uh, they do have stingers. Now, if you were a fish, the, the story would be pretty different. Oh, yeah. If you're a fish, you're, you're prey now. You're not going anywhere. And that actually kind of leads into a, a pretty popular or well-known, I guess, example of uh, symbiosis in the ocean. Uh, can you talk a little bit about clownfish and anemones? Yeah. Now, they're not in this exhibit. They're actually behind us. We do have an exhibit dedicated to clownfish. But since we're talking anemones, it seems like a good time to discuss that. Yeah, so... Um The fish, the fish eating ones, the red bases, they have um, a 
<laughs> so uh, four-year-old Stella would like to know uh, whether, uh, why there are some that are pink. So why are some of the anemones pink? So Jamie Hudgens is passing along a, a comment from her seven-year-old who wanted to tell you that anemones are cute. <laughs> I think so too. I think they look like an underwater garden, honestly. I think they look like little flowers. Yeah, they're great. They're, they're such interesting animals. And, um, a lot of people, when they walk through, they think they're just plants or decoration. But they're really beautiful. All right, so Jamie Hudgens is passing along a comment from her seven-year-old who wanted to tell you that anemones are cute. I think they look like an underwater garden, honestly. I think they look like little flowers. Yeah, they're great. Uh, to those of you who are watching and saying that you can't wait to visit the aquarium again, we cannot wait to have you. Believe me, uh, we would very much love to have people visiting us right now, but we want to make sure that everybody is safe uh, and that everything is, is nice and sanitized and ready for you. When you come back, we want to make sure that health and is really pretty much our, our top priority right now. So, so we can't wait to have you back, but we want to make sure the time is right and stay tuned to our social channels and our website for more news on, you know, when, when that eventually happens, we'll make sure that you, you can, we'll give you an update through either of those channels. Ashley Temple, who's watching from Ohio says, hello from your cousin. My cousin is also watching, so. Uh, Amy uh, Polahar uh, would like to know, do they move around or are they in the same place you place them? We kind of talked about that, but you know, some people are joining the stream later than others, so if you want to go ahead and maybe yeah, recap. So they have the ability to move around. Generally, they stay in the same spot, especially because in here, each spot is generally the same because the wave is coming through, so there's lots of flow in most areas of the tank. So generally, they're consistent and we're feeding them, so they're happy. Um, so they generally stay put, but they definitely can move around, um, even if it's not that far. Some of them will travel pretty far, and actually, sometimes groups of them will get together and fight other enemies. Not so much in here because they're out there crowded, uh, but in a while. So they'll kind of be in groups, not actively, like let's all gang up on this other enemy, but generally they're, they're in the same area, so groups of enemies will come together uh, in a line as the more enemies grow and then fight each other at that, you know, where they intersect. Uh, and Right. Uh, uh, so Jamie Hudgens asks, my five-year-old wants to know what the anemones eat. Do different kinds like different foods? What, sorry? Do different kinds of anemones like different kinds of food? Uh, Uh, so Sarah Vaughn would like to know, did you get the specimens from the Vancouver Aquarium? No, actually all of ours were wild collected for us um, from Vancouver. Um, and 
Sorry about that. Tasha is perfectly positioned to not show you what she's actually feeding. I'm behind this pillar here. I'll come over here. That's okay. So uh, Jeannie Parrish would like to know how often do you have to feed them? We feed them about once, every, once a week. So the water is really cold. It's 53 degrees. So they have really slow metabolisms. So uh, once a week is fine. If you notice know, they're having problems, which they have, then we'll feed them again. But generally, they can probably go every two weeks or once a month. Okay. So Amanda Fox is asking on behalf of Kiara, age seven, uh, if the animals in this tank eat anything other than the things you are feeding them right now. So. Is there any intra intra tank predation? I guess is one way to put it. Yes. <laughs> some of our fish, we uh, try to have some shiner perch in here, which are like our zebra perch over there. Uh, there are just a couple inches. Uh, the idea was that with the wave, they would kind of ride the wave and surf on it, which they did. Uh, but they also were very smart, and so our ninjas kind of gobbled them up. Um, so yes, uh, they will. Uh, Cassie Nice is asking on behalf of five-year-old Dax, uh, why there isn't any coral reef in this water? There's no coral reef in this why, water. Why is there no coral reef in this water? Um, so generally, it's, it's too cold. Um, you know, coral generally grows in warm tropical areas with lots of sunlight. Uh, because these animals live all the way until the last day, you know, there, because they're at the top of the globe, their life cycle are a little bit different. There's just not enough sunlight for that. Uh, so Amanda Fox again asks, uh, her son Aiden is wondering if you still have the red clownfish in the saltwater tank near the shark tank. Uh, I'm not sure. Yes, the maroon clownfish. Oh, okay, yes. Out there in the coral reef In the live the coral tank. Live coral tank. That's right, yes. Yeah, we do have those. And then uh, over here, to give you a look at the rest of the gallery, this is actually our, our clownfish exhibit. This is a dedicated exhibit just for clownfish and anemones. Those are two different species of clownfish. Not necessarily the topic of today's discussion uh, for the live stream, but since you asked, we do actually have clownfish in this gallery as well as in the live coral tank as Tasha was just mentioning. Uh, Ariana, oh boy, these last names. Ariana Sclerondis? Meta butchered that, probably did. Uh, would like to know, do anemones have any predators? So we talked about the fact that they're, they are voracious themselves, but does anything prey on them? Um, there are things that will eat them, like crabs, lobsters, they'll pick up their tentacles, some of them will eat the tentacles, some of them will eat the faces. Um, generally, there's, there's, not, there's not a lot there. There's mostly water and tissues, so um, they're not a very excellent meal, but there are predators that will munch on them. Right. Uh, let's see. So David Miller asked on behalf of Austin, how many types of anemones are there? That might be hard. Do you have that information just offhand? I don't know off the top of my, off the top of my head, but there's probably, you know, one to 2,000 at least different species. Um, what would it be for, easier? For, for Vancouver Island area, there's probably about 20 to 30, uh, if I had a guess. Um, generally, most more diversity um, in the warmer uh, anemones. Okay. And then, I mean, if we go back to talking about uh, the clownfish example earlier, the symbiosis, symbiotic relationship between clownfish and certain species of anemones, do we know how many species of anemones happen to form those symbiotic relationships? I do know that. I, th that I think is, that's a number uh, you know. Ten. There are ten species of uh, warm water anemones that will host with 20 different um, anemone fish, so clownfish. Uh, they don't all gener they don't all host with each other. Um, sometimes an anemone will only accept, accept you know one or two uh, species. Um, generally, only one at a time. Um, but yeah, they uh, I actually know the answer to that one. <laughs> I thought I'd pitch you a softball question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Uh, so Susan, whose last name I'm not going to pronounce, uh, I'm just going to say Susan K. Uh, would like to know what temperature is the water. Again, we've, we've covered a few of these topics uh, already, but if you're joining the live stream late, I don't know that Tasha would have any problem with telling you. I do not. It is 53 degrees in here. How does so, it feel on the waders? It's pretty cold. My legs are starting to get cold now. Once I get my arms in, it, it's kind of game over. It's a little bit chilly. <laughs> Uh, so Ashley King Cheros would like to know how deep in the water can anemones, survi can anemones survive? So at what point would you stop seeing anemones once you got too oh, deep? They live really deep. So you can find them, I mean, all the way, I don't know about in the deepest part of the ocean um, because they can't move around. Well, maybe they are down there, but you can find them relatively deep. Even these species, they live in the intertidal zone. So that's sometimes when the tide comes all the way out in the spring, uh, they'll be under, but generally they're covered all the time, but they're on the shore. Um, so most of them live from there down. So you can find them really deep. Uh, Ethan Mitchell would like to know how do anemones reproduce? That is an interesting because they yeah. have a very complex life cycle. Don't yeah, they? so they can produce, they can reproduce either sexually or asexually. So they can, like these aggregating anemones here, they'll kind of just split in half, and then you've got two anemones. Um, can you point the, to them one more time? I didn't yeah, have the camera. These ones here these little guys. So they'll just split and grow. Same with these uh, strawberry anemones down here. They'll just split and grow um, really easy. For the other anemones, there are actually males and females. And so they'll release their eggs and their sperm and then they'll uh, combine to form a larva. And then the larva will swim around for a little while and then it will plant down somewhere and then it will grow, 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 and grow. And you mentioned uh, that there that there are some similarities, I guess, in the light, or there are some some similarities between them and jellyfish, and that's kind of one situation where they do actually have a few parallels. Yeah, so they're actually related to each other, the anemones and the uh, jellyfish. Same with coral, they're all anemones. Um, so they all have seeds. And Nidarian, if you're watching this, and that's your science vocabulary word for the day, is a hard one. That's actually spelled starts with a C. So if you want to look up Nidarian, it actually starts with a C. Uh, let's see. So David Miller is asking on behalf of Melody, how many types of anemones are in your aquarium? And also adds that he can't wait to visit again. Uh, so David, I'm trying to keep you on your toes. Uh, someone did ask if you've ever accidentally stepped on an anemone and then had a lot of sad face emojis. So oh, I hope the answer no, is no. I can see where I'm stepping. Um, they're pretty soft bodies, so even if you did step on them, you're not going to break anything. Um, they're just going to squish. Well, and if you watch how Tasha's moving, she's been very, very careful, and I think. She's pretty aware of where there are spots uh, in the tank that are that are more bare and safe safe to step on. So. Yeah, actually, if you look at the tank as a whole, let me stand out of the way. It was designed so that it'd be safe for us, and there was places to walk. So you come you come through the exhibit behind that rock work. There's a ladder, and you walk down, and you can kind of see how it's shaped like a stairs. So you just step right down like you're walking down a staircase. Super easy. Uh, so. So speaking of urchins, David Miller is asking on behalf of Noah, are they related to urchins? So are anemones and urchins related? No, they're different. Uh, urchins are echinoderms, uh, so they are just, they're just different. They're all invertebrates, so they all don't have bones, but they're just different categories of invertebrates. You said echinoderm? Yeah. So just like starfish? Yeah, so they're the same, and then the, uh, the crabs are separate. They're crustaceans. Uh, and Melanie J. King would like to know, did we talk about crabs and I missed it? We have briefly, we briefly mentioned uh, crabs, but... We're actually going to feed them when we get over there. Uh, so as, while Tasha's making her way over, we do actually have three Dungeness crabs. There's one, there's one in the background, and then, or are there more than that? Am I miscounting? There's three. There are three. I just, I'm getting confused because there are reflections that are probably throwing me off. One, two, three. So we do have three Dungeness crabs in this exhibit as well. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so and then also, another big fishery are for the urchins. So the eggs that are inside of there are really fresh and they are really healthy. And then also the eggs that are inside of there are really healthy. And then also the eggs that are inside of there are really healthy. And then also the eggs that are inside Oh, just barely. Uh, actually, you can see it pretty well on camera. So Jared Scarberry asks, what do the starfish eat? Some might say that's gross. <laughs> it's also just, it's just interesting. It's their, it's their, their approach. Yeah. And so these are called bat stars um, because of the webbing in between their arms. They look like bats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you said they're all, they're echinoderms. Yeah, uh, and doesn't that mean, doesn't that mean bumpy skin? I'm not, I don't know. I think I'm, go, I'm, I'm really calling back to my AP biology class. That was about 20 years ago, but I feel like that's what that means. Uh, Michelle uh, O'Meara Duke says that looks like a fun job, and I think most of us would probably agree that it's a pretty fun, fun place to work. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, Cub Scout Pack uh, 1597 wants to know how cold is the water, and again, uh, Tashi, you've already said it a couple of times, but you said 53 degrees? 53, and it's, not, it's actually not the coldest um, that we have. The penguins are 42 or 48? 42 for 48, the penguins, yeah. yeah. So Uh, so, Ariana Sclerondis, uh, again, I may have mispronounced that, but uh, what is the most common anemone color? The what? The most common anemone color. Hmm, I'm not 100% sure, but if I had a guess, I would say red. Red, okay. We see a lot that are red. And as Tasha pointed out earlier, if it looks like uh, that food is just sitting on the anemone, uh, some anemones just happen to eat slower than others, and over time that food will disappear. It'll be moved into the, that little mouth in the center. The tentacles are. Yeah. So uh, Brandy Honeycutt would like to know, on behalf of Abel, when you got the clownfish over in the other tank, if you're talking about the clownfish in this tank, uh, the one I showed you earlier, that those arrived at about the same time as when Island Life opened last April? March. Last March. Last March. Uh, so about a year ago. Ah, so uh, Misty Davis uh, says her daughter would like to know what the pink guys on the wall are. Uh, pink guys on the wall. So I'm not sure which wall we're talking about. Um, if you're talking about the acrylic, what would be those pink ones that you just fed one to? Right there, right in front of you, the ones that held on to the, the food. Oh, these are fish eating anemones. Fish eating anemones. I hope that's who you're asking about, Missy. I'm sorry, I'm not sure which, which wall you're talking about. Are there any other species of anemones on this particular wall? Well, there's this rose spot in anemone here. See, he's got a white spot. And then this guy has a solid red base. So that's how you can tell them apart. 
Uh, bat stars are getting a lot of compliments. Apparently, bat stars are beautiful. They are beautiful. They come in lots of different colors, so they're cool. Here's that going to be this crab. He may get excited to see us. Oh, he looks pretty excited to me. All right, now if you're going to feed the other crabs, I'm going to go inside of our, our viewing window. Okay. So Tasha is going to be unavailable for a second, but uh, this will give you a better view of what the crabs look like as they eat. Sorry, I tried to go in there, but I lost connection, so I'm not sure that's the best idea. Ah, so apparently we got the right species of anemone. Oh, cool. All right, so sorry about that. Okay, so uh, four-year-old Megan would like to know how many years do starfish live? Sixty to eighty. Yep. Wow. Well, that I'm learning something new too. Uh, and actually, that answers the the next question, which was from Sarah Feltz, who asked, "How long do anemones live?" On behalf of her a 13 year old Jill. Excellent. All right. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of our our questions uh, on the live stream uh, thus far. At least, if you have any others, please do make sure that you type them in the comments, and I'll pass them on to Tasha while we're still live streaming here. Uh, but in the meantime, while there's a bit of a lull, I'll go ahead and point out that uh, yet again, we do have learning resources available for those of you who are parents at home with small kids uh, sheltering in place. We, many of you know, school goes on as, as best we can, and uh, we like to serve as a learning resource for you and for your children. So please go to our website, tnaqua.org, and look under Aquarium at Home. We've got a lot of different resources available for you, like coloring pages and activity sheets. Uh, we mentioned our Weekday Wonders uh, series that we have started today. Uh, and again, those questions that we're going to have a daily question that comes up in every one of the live streams that we do daily at about 1 p.m. Uh, and our expert will address that question. Uh, but uh, in addition to that daily question, there are also activities that are being produced by our educators in our education department on a weekly basis. So please make sure you go back and check uh, every week and there will be new activities for you and your kids to be to use to stay engaged and broaden your horizons and learn some things and have some fun and maybe get outside and do some backyard science and not be stuck inside all the time. Uh, Marilyn Payne would like to know, how do the tiny strawberry anemones get fed? Uh, yes, so you may have noticed, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but we had some very small cut um, foods, uh, just little pieces that were mixed in here so as I was feeding these larger pieces they're falling off um, and then that spreads all over the place and then once we're done we'll turn the wave back on and that will kick up a lot of food and then they'll catch it with their tentacles. Okay. So they get plenty of food from the water. Uh, and as I do every single day uh, while we're closed I'll go ahead and point out that the aquarium has set up an emergency operations fund that uh, we are accepting donations for because people like Tasha uh, are continuing to come in every day and make sure that the animals are taken care of, that they're receiving the same level of care that they always receive, no matter whether we're open for visitors or not. And obviously there is expense associated with that. So if you would like to donate to the ongoing maintenance of the aquarium and ensure that we're able to weather the financial hardship of remaining closed a little bit better. Uh, we do have a donation set up on our website at tnaqua.org. Uh, there's a donate tab and if you click on that, that'll take you to a page where you can make a contribution if you feel like that's something you'd like to do. And if you do, obviously we would appreciate it. And if you don't, if all you would like to do is tune into these broadcasts, we are more than happy to help you stay connected and to help you maybe distract yourself a little bit from the situation at hand. It's not an easy situation for any of us, but we're happy to give you some insights, let you look at some beautiful animals and maybe learn a thing or two. And uh, yeah, for those of you who are, 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 have stuck with us this entire time, thank you very, very much. 
Tasha, thank you for answering all of our questions. We really appreciate it. I think everyone who's watching would probably echo that sentiment. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm not sure what the schedule is, but tune in to our Facebook page at around 11 a.m. And we should have some sort of notice up letting you know where we're going to be and what we're going to talk about. So, Tasha, thank you very much. Those of you who have watched, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.